us here at First United Presbyterian Church of Dale City. We're going to start, as we always do, stand with us as you're able so we can sing and worship together. Hail Jesus, you're my King. Good morning and welcome to worship here at First United Presbyterian Church of Dale City. My name is Pastor Adam and we are so very glad that you have been able to join us, whether in person or online, for this service of worship. If you're in person, we hope that you will sign in on the little attendance pad since we're not passing our friendship registers right now. And if you're online, you can go to www.fupcdc.org and click that online attendance and prayer request button. Also on that form is a special section for your joys and celebrations, your prayers and concerns. Um, And I think we're going to bring back our prayer book in the the fancy church words, the sacristy, but it's the communion prep room. For those of you who are in the building, you can write your prayer requests down there so that we can be praying for you and yours. We are a, a church of prayer. Prayer is the key. And so it would be our honor and privilege to pray for you. And you can choose who receives that information, whether it's just the pastor and staff or our prayer team that meets on Thursday, or the church-wide prayer chain email list. Also on our church website is the bulletin so that you can follow along or you can pick one up as you come in the sanctuary. Uh, And I wanted to highlight a few announcements for you. Also, if you are a visitor, we have a special welcome table in the back of the sanctuary. We'd love for you to go there and fill out a connect card and we have a special gift for you. Um, A couple announcements, disaster relief, we've all heard about the horrible earthquake in Haiti. Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is working there now, and if you would like to donate to that cause, you can send a check um, or give in the offering boxes and just write disaster relief on the memo line, and we'll make sure it gets to the, the folks helping with that. Or you can give online, just click designated giving, and in the notes section, put disaster relief, and that's again to help the folks in Haiti as they recover uh, from that horrible earthquake. Also, next Sunday, the 29th, we're going to go on a special trip, one of the first ones since COVID. Um, We're going to ask people to drive themselves, or you can carpool if you feel comfortable. We're going down to Trinity Episcopal in Fredericksburg, and we're going to meet there at 3 p.m. for a special program. They just put in this beautiful prayer labyrinth, which is a walking uh, prayer labyrinth. A prayer labyrinth doesn't have any dead ends or wrong turns. It's kind of like our journey of faith. Uh, God God guides us, and uh, we're going to have a little short five to ten minute program about what a prayer labyrinth is and how to pray one and walk one, and then you're going to have a chance to experience the prayer labyrinth for yourself, 
And then anybody who wants to, you could go home then, but if anybody wants to, we're thinking about going to get some Carl's ice cream or maybe exploring downtown Fredericksburg. So more information is coming in your email. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Men's breakfast is starting uh, back on September 11th at 8 a.m., an important day of prayer in our nation. So we hope that you will join us for that. Also save the date for the next Sunday, uh, September 12th, which will be one service at 10 a.m. And then our church picnic, which is a little bit different, read about it, um, or food will be provided, and, but that is weather dependent. So if it's bad weather, that will just be canceled, just heads up about that. Also, a final note is about Little Hands Preschool. Um, Registration is still open. We have uh, the teachers are already here. One of them is right here in our sanctuary uh, and getting ready for the kids. We are still hiring a couple teacher assistant positions. So if you know of anybody who's interested, have them contact our director. Um, so these are very part time, um, half day, only a couple days a week jobs. But if you're interested or you know somebody who's interested, let us know. And then also, um, we're still uh, registering students. We still have a few spots left, so point people to our re website and encourage them to do that. And then finally, on the back of the bulletin, lots of information about ways that you can support the preschool. It's been a tough year because we had to close the preschool, so it's a lot of work to get it uh, going again, and it's been a, quite a struggle. So if you are uh, interested in donating supplies or cleaning supplies to help the preschool out, it's supposed to be go till today, in the Narthex Welcome Center, but there's a list here for the Tree of Hope. But if you can't get it today and you still want to help the preschool out, just give it to Tiffany, go down to the preschool, drop it off there anytime this week. I know that they would welcome uh, the supplies and ways that you can support uh, the preschool with uh, everything from glue sticks to coffee cups and paper towels. So if you're willing to, to support that, that would be wonderful. So again, spread the word about how registration's open and a couple more positions and then help out if you can. Um, I believe those are all the announcements I have. So as you are able, I invite you to stand and join me in our gathering words. We hear the voice of God calling, love your neighbor as yourself. We feel the spirit moving among us moving us to acts of compassion and justice. We know the love of Jesus. We love because Christ first loved us. Come, worship God together. Come, let us serve our God who calls us by name.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in Christ Jesus, you teach us to love our neighbors, but instead we build dividing walls of hostility. You show us how to love one another as sisters and brothers, but instead we hide from our own human family. You ask us to seek out the stranger and welcome the guest. You want us to share your abundant gifts with the poor, but instead we cling tightly to our possessions and our privilege. You call us to proclaim good news to all people, but instead we waste our words and hide our light. Lord, our loving God, have mercy on us. Forgive our sin. Open our hearts and change our lives. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Make us holy and whole, one people, united in faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, our reconciler and redeemer. Hear us now as we continue to confess in the silence of our hearts. Amen. Friends, this is the water of baptism and reminds us that God's love and God's forgiveness washes over each and every one of us. So hear the good news. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Hearing this good news, know that we are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And since we have been forgiven in Christ, let us forgive one another. I remind you that we're not physically shaking hands or hugging right now, but we're passing the peace in two ways, either by saying the peace of Christ be with you or with American Sign Language, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. We also encourage you to take this time to think about who you can connect with this week to pass God's love and peace and grace to and if you are a child, a student, a teacher, or a staff member, and you remembered your bag, or even if you forgot your book bag, we invite you to come forward to the chancel steps for the time for children during this time. So, friends, may the peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. It's good to see everybody. I'm putting one of these on Parker's bag for him. He's up in the sound booth doing the slides. Tomorrow's a big day. What's happening tomorrow? School. School. It's the first day of school. So I want you to think about how you're feeling about the first day of school, all right? And I want you to give me a thumbs up, or you can do kind of a, mm, I'm not too happy, all right? So how are you guys, the parents included, how are you feeling about the first day? mixed a lot of thumbs up some people are eh. 
I don't see any thumbs down. That's good, but it, it's okay. Thank you for being brave and sharing how you feel. You know, going back to school invites uh, feelings to come upon us, and those feelings can be different for everyone, and that's okay. Whether you're starting school for the first time or moving to a new school or staying at the same school or returning to school in person for the first time after maybe being virtual all last year, we can feel happy or nervous, scared, curious, or maybe excited. And sometimes we can feel all those things this, all at the same time, right? And that's okay. But did you know that God is always with us? Whether we're at school, whether we're at home, God is always there. No matter where we go and what we feel, God is with you. And so as we start this new school year, I wanted to give you um, a special backpack tag that looks like this so that whenever you look at it, you can remember that God loves you and is always with you no matter what. And it has the church logo so you can know that all these people out there and the people at the first service and the people at home are praying for you. Whether you're a student, a staff member, or a teacher, we're praying for you each and every day just to be loved and reminded that you are a special child of God and for a great year. Sound good? Now, also on the tag is scripture, which I think is the most important part of the tag. So I want you to listen really quickly to this year's scripture. It comes from number six, verses 24 through 26. It says, the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you peace. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The other thing is, you know, I can't pass up a good pun. My kids can tell you that, right? And so on the back of the tag, it says, God's got your back. Get it? Backpack, back. Ah, uh, right. But it is a good reminder that God does have your back, that God is always with you. So all my friends, I'm going to pass these out. This school year, may you be curious and kind, gentle and strong, brave and loving, all right? And then after I give you this, I'm going to give you something else, okay? And I need probably a couple for you guys, right? You have a teacher in your family, I know, preschool director. And if you need more, if you're sitting out there and you said, my kid or grandkid is a staff member or a student and they would like one or I have a neighbor friend that I would like to give this to, then you can also come up after the service and you can have one too. Anybody out there, teacher, staff that I missed? All right, so they're going to sit up here, and you can grab one and give them to a friend. I put one on Parker's bag, or if somebody couldn't be here in person today, or if you're virtually at home and you want one, let me know. I'll even mail you one or drop one off at your house. So along with the backpack tag, I wanted to share a blessing with you. Now, as a blessing is something you receive, so I want you to open your hands like you're ready to receive a special gift. Can you guys do that for me? And as I speak, I want you to imagine the words kind of dancing, floating, and fluttering all around. And watch them as maybe they land on your hands or on your backpack or on your tag. And when you receive the blessing at the end, I want you to put it in your heart. Can you guys do that? So we're going to receive the blessing and put it in our heart. So now may these tags remind you that God is always with you. And whether you sit or stand, as you learn and as you play, in every fear and every celebration, may you know God, your friend, is always there. And as it says on the tag, God has got your back. So take that blessing and put it in your heart. Awesome. And I'm also going to say a prayer. Now, normally I have you guys repeat after me, but this one also just listen and receive this prayer. And then I'll have everybody say amen with me at the end. You guys ready? All right, let's pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings, we bring ourselves, our big feelings, and our backpacks to you. Last year was different from what we expected. We couldn't see our friends or play on playgrounds. We learned at home in masks six feet apart or both. In all these changes, we may have felt sad and alone. God, our friend who comforts us, hold us close and wipe away our tears. In our backpacks, we carry blank pages, sharpened pencils, and pointy crayons. And in our hearts, we carry big feelings, unanswered questions, and hopeful expectations. There are endless possibilities of what this new year might bring, of what we might learn, of who we might meet, of who we might become. God, our friend who is always with us, be with us through it all. Be with us as we ride the bus. Be with us as we walk. 
Be with us as we buckle our seatbelts, zip up jackets, and tie shoes. And however we get there and whatever we wear, bless this journey into something new. And for the grown-ups going back to school, with us, God, be with them too. Thank you for our teachers, helpers, caregivers, and leaders, and for all they do to help us learn and grow. God, our friend who's full of wonder, fill their hearts and bless their hands. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, guys, so I hope you have a wonderful week and an even better school year. And again, at the end of the service, if you have folks that you want to give a tag to, maybe even a friend at school, you can tell them that your church is praying for them. You can come up and get a couple extra, okay? Sound good? All right, it was good seeing you, and I hope you have a wonderful first day. God bless. Let us pray. Loving God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. As the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. First reading for today is from the book of Numbers, chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, and then 25 to 33. Listen now to God, for God's word to God's church. The Lord said to Moses, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each of their ancestral tribes, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them leading men among the Israelites. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land, and they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the Israelites in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Yet the people who live in the land are strong, and the towns are fortified, and it is very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the land of the Negev. The Hittites, Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone with him said, We are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. So they brought, up, so they brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of, of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great size. There we saw the Nephilim, the Anakites come from the Nephilim, and to ourselves we seemed like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from the, the gospel according to Luke, chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're just now joining us, know that we are finishing up a series called The Art of Neighboring, which is based on scripture and a book by Jay Paddock and Dave Runyon. The main premise is pretty simple. It is to take the great commandment seriously. You see, when Jesus was asked to reduce everything in the Bible into one command, he said this, love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. What if he meant that we should love our actual neighbors? You know, the people who live right next door. The first week we talked about getting to know our neighbors by getting to know wh who, what are their names. Those who live in the eight houses or apartments or townhomes closest to us. 
And then after learning their names, forming relationships with them, listening to their stories, asking them about their hopes and dreams, and maybe even their struggles. This, of course, is going to take time. And so last week, we talked about the main barrier to neighboring, which is time. We must learn to prioritize our lives so that we can love God and our family and then our neighbors. We talked about saying no to some good things so we can say yes to a greater calling by God to follow this great commandment. Today we're going to tackle another major barrier to taking the great commandment seriously, loving our God and loving our neighbors, and that is fear. Which reminds me of a story that Jay, one of the authors of the book, The Art of Neighboring, shared with me. He said that one of the first things that he and his wife Danielle did when they moved into their new neighborhood was to bake apple pies. Well, his wife did the baking because she just loves to bake. But they thought that sharing her treats was an easy way to introduce themselves to their new neighbors. They didn't want to wait for their neighbors to make the first move, which they thought would kind of maybe be awkward. And who doesn't love pie? However, they quickly learned how truly uncomfortable this process can be. The good news is that they encountered mostly positive responses. People were appreciative and thanked them for the pies. Others were surprised, almost a little bit embarrassed, that they hadn't done something to welcome them first. But most seemed happy to see them and enjoyed meeting them. One of the neighbors, however, went in the complete opposite direction. He wouldn't even open the door to say hello. And when Jay and Danielle approached, he only spoke to them through a crack in the door. He actually told them to leave. It was as though he thought that they were trying there to try to sell something or distribute religious literature. We just want to give you a pie, they said. We just moved in around the corner and we're taking pies to all our neighbors. Whatever you're selling, we don't want it, he said. If it's a sample, you can just leave it on the doorstep. We're not selling anything, they said, pointing to their home 200 feet away. We, we live right over there. No, we don't need anything. Just go away. So they did. And on the way back home, Danielle and Jay discussed what had just happened. I mean, seriously, what could be threatening about apple pie? They tried to put themselves in their neighbor's shoes. It sounded as, as if he spoke with an accent, so maybe their American forwardness was too over the top for his cultural upbringing. Or perhaps no one had ever reached out and tried to get to know him. This neighbor had also asked them several times if they were solicitors. Did he just not believe them when they said no? Regardless, they couldn't help but take it personally. The episode left them feeling very confused. A few days later, Jay spotted the same neighbor out in the front of his home doing yard work. He walked over and introduced himself again. This time, the neighbor was a bit more receptive. He told Jay that the only people who ever come to the door were salespeople, and he thought for sure that they were trying to sell something. Jay reassured him, again, that they were not. Even after that positive exchange, it still took the family a while to warm up to them. Jay says, if we saw them driving in the neighborhood, we waved, but they didn't wave back. Eventually, though, they returned our wave. So what was up with their neighbor? As Jay and Danielle got to know him better, they realized that he was really just afraid, afraid of the unknown. He had fallen prey to one of the other primary obstacles to neighboring in our culture today, fear. It's no wonder we live in a culture of fear and suspicion, given the 24-hour news cycle that's just one click away. Any time, any day, you can turn on the TV or hit that link to view multiple scary or downright cringy cringe-worthy stories. Even as I prepared the sermon, I kept hearing about the bomb threat by a man in a truck outside Library of Congress in D.C. this past week. The natural response is, wow, we live in such a, such a sick and broken world. And it's true, there are some really messed up people out there. The problem is that when we continually expose ourselves to these types of stories, a subtle shift can take place in how we view the people around us. It's easy to believe that those really sick people are everywhere, when in reality they are just the exception. And you can't help but wonder, are there just as many more sick people in our world than a generation past? Or is it possible that because of technology, our awareness of people's brokenness is much higher now than it has been in the past? These days, it's easy to be suspicious of people you don't know. Perhaps there's a man who lives on your block 
And for some reason, you've always just had an uncomfortable feeling whenever you see him. Or maybe there are kids in your neighborhood who are about the same age as yours, but you know that their parents don't have the same values you do, and you feel a bit uneasy every time your kids go over there and play. Or how about that house on your block where nobody ever seems to be home? It's not abandoned, it's just that no one is ever there. You wonder what in the world is wrong with those people. Is there a family on your block that always seems to have drama in their lives? You can tell that they have a ton of baggage, and maybe you're just not sure if you want to enter into that chaos. It's just easier to keep them at a healthy distance. Or maybe it's the idea of a long-term commitment. You know that if you get to know a particular neighbor, you're going to be in one another's lives for years to come. I mean, going down to the bus depot to feed people for spread, to, for spread the bread a couple of times a year is one thing. But when you get to know your neighbors, they're always there. There's no getting away from them, nowhere to run and hide. Now, I'm not recommending that you simply dismiss all your fears and blindly jump into every one of your neighbor's lives. After all, at times our fears are valid and can save us from dangerous and unhealthy situations. On the other hand, our fears are often unwarranted and may be obstacles to obeying the great commandment. So if we're going to neighbor well, we must have the courage to wrestle with our fears. When the Israelites first considered entering the promised land, they came to the border and stopped. In Numbers 13, we read their story. The Israelites sent 12 spies into the land, and all but two came back with fearful reports. The land is fantastic, said the 10 fearful spies. Everywhere we looked, the whole country flowed with milk and honey. But the people who live there are giants, and there is absolutely no way that we Israelites could ever take possession of the land. They even went so far as to say their enemies saw them as nothing more than grasshoppers. However, two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, saw things differently. They could see that fear was distracting the others from the promise of God's provision. The fear was all in the ten spies' perception, declared Joshua and Caleb. Did the other spies ever actually interview the people to find out how scary they really were? Though there was much to be afraid of, fortified walls, potential for war, better weapons, there was no way that they could tell what their enemies were thinking. They weren't mind readers. Did their enemies really see the Israelites as mere grasshoppers? Or was that only how the ten fearful spies perceived the situation? What I'm saying is that fear changes not only our image of others, but also what we assume they think about us. Unfortunately, the nation of Israel believed the ten fearful spies, so God became angry at their cowardice and lack of faith, and as a result, they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. They were on the doorstep, doorstep of something God wanted to do through them, but their perceived fears kept them from what God had laid out from them, for them. Now, 40 years later, the Israelites came to the border of the Promised Land again. Everyone from the previous generation, except Joshua and Caleb, had died. A telling statement comes from Rahab, a woman who lived in the land. She explained how years earlier, things were the opposite of what the Israelites thought was true. Joshua and Caleb had been right all along. When the spies entered the land 40 years earlier, everybody in the land was afraid of them. They did not see them as easy prey as the ten spies had imagined. Listen to Joshua chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Rahab said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear has fallen, a fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We had heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did at Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. The Israelites' perception had been wrong all along. They had always feared their neighbors, perceiving them as giants. But in truth, their neighbors feared the Israelites because of their God. Fear has a way of distorting our perspective. When we are afraid of others, we think of ourselves as less important and less powerful. The world is big, bad, and dark, but Rahab's word, words can give us encouragement when applied to our situation. We may be afraid, 
but often things are not as they seem to be. When we are following God into our neighborhoods, we have nothing to fear. And often it's our neighbors that need to be rescued from their fear. And keep in mind that most of us have been conditioned to be afraid of our neighbors, and they've been conditioned to be afraid of us. Someone has to break the cycle of fear. The authors of the book of The Art of Neighboring also talk about how much of our fear is actually labeled just being timid. That feeling of awkwardness isn't fear, it's just nervousness about possible rejection. The truth is, awkwardness won't kill you. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. God enables all of us to be bold, to take the first step, to be the neighbors we were meant to be. We don't need to be afraid. When we feel those emotions creeping in, we need to remind ourselves that a little awkward, awkwardness is probably the worst of it. Remember that God is always already working in your neighborhood. Being a good neighbor simply means slowing down and being aware of what God is already doing. By developing real relationships, you'll find out how God is already moving in a person's life. You'll be able to overcome your, the fear that you once had and develop trust for one another. You'll be able to grow in your relationship with God, and that is a wonderful thing. May it be so. May it be so. You know, I couldn't do a sermon series on neighboring without quoting my childhood hero, Mr. Rogers, at least once. So I'll leave you with two quotes by him. First, love isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun, like struggle. To love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is, right here and now. And listening is where love begins. Listening to ourselves and then listening to our neighbors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the invitation is this. Remember, it's easy to make assumptions about other people when you don't really know anything about them. So just continually examine the assumptions or perceptions that you have about your neighbors. Ask yourself, is this an assumption or is it true? Maybe if I got to know him or her, would I feel different? Confronting our fears regarding our neighbors can be hard work, but it's worth it. There's a lot of peace that can come to your life when you know your neighbors. You can grow to be a person who isn't controlled by fear, which is a much better way to live. Also, know if you are looking for a neighborhood, a place to belong, let me say on behalf of our congregation, welcome home, for all, all are welcome here. It doesn't matter what you have done or left undone. It doesn't matter who you love or how much you have read from the Bible. We want you to know that you are welcome here. If you have questions of faith, have a prayer request, or would like to know more about this community of faith, know that my door is always open. Give me a call, send me a text message or email, or see me after the worship service. I would love to talk with you, hear your story, and pray for you and yours, and answer any questions you may have. Also, if you would like to uh, explore becoming an official member or friend of this church, know that you are invited to join us for a special Discover First United lunch program on Sunday, September 26th from noon until 1.30 p.m. Please contact the church office or let me know if you would like to sign up and attend. And now, as you are able, let us stand and sing our song of response.
be seated. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer, praying for our world, our nation, and our neighbors. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we come to you today to lift up our world, our nation, and our neighborhoods. We see the darkness and brokenness all around us. We turn on the news and click on those links, and we are astonished. We are embarrassed. We are depressed. We live in fear. Help us to not be afraid. Remind us that you are in control and that you are a mighty God, a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of healing, and a God of hope. You walk with us in our nation, in our neighborhoods, in our homes, and into our very hearts. Transform us. Remind us that everyone, everyone on earth is a child of God, created by you. Help us to see your image in our neighbors. Help us to love them as you love us. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we continue to lift up Afghanistan and the Afghan people, especially those who worked with the United States and who are now in danger. Be with our military and all people as they attempt to evacuate the country. Keep our men and women in uniform safe. Enter into this difficult situation and help us do our very best to protect the least, the lost, and the most vulnerable. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. We continually lift up, we continue to lift up the country of Haiti. After a magnitude 7.2 earthquake struck over a week ago, ca causing widespread destruction. We now read that the death toll has risen to at least 1,419 as search and rescue teams are racing to find survivors in collapsed buildings and rubble. At least 6,000 are injured and many more are still missing. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we also pray for all places in the world where there is war or ongoing conflict. Afghanistan, Mexico with the ongoing drug conflict, Yemen, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Myanmar, Somalia, Congo, Chad, Iraq, Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon, Syria, Libya, South Sudan, Mali, Mozambique, Tanzania, and all places, Lord, where there is violence, conflict, and war. Lord, we lift them up to you and we pray for peace and for the lives of all people created in your image. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we also lift up the people in the path of Hurricane Henri and of uh, Tropical Storm, former Hurricane Grace. We pray for those who have already been affected by grace. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. We now also pray for those to whom we are the closest, whose burdens we bear the most obviously, for members of our own families and of the family of this congregation who are sick, who are grieving, who may be struggling, especially those we now name by typing their names in the, pro the live stream chat or by naming them aloud during this time of silence. Norman and Dolly, Grace, Lord, as we lift up these individuals and situations to you, continue to give us strength to follow the great commandment. Help us to love you with all we have and to love our neighbors. And now, let us pray the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us by praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we have now come to our service of giving. I remind you at this time in person, we are not passing the offering plates, but have two offering boxes at the entrances 
and exits. So as you come in or out of the sanctuary, you can drop your offering there. As always, you can write a check and send that in the postal mail, um, or you can go to our website, www.fupcvc.org, and click on the online giving button so you can give electronically. You can even do what our family does and set that up to be a reoccurring gift. And you can choose when that reoccurs. Um, we are reminded in this time that everything we have, everything, even that last breath you took, is a gift from God. And we are called by God to be good stewards of our time, talents, and treasure. And so we give back a portion joyfully to support the mission and outreach of this church as we continue to do God's kingdom work. Friends, let us now present our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Lord, 
Let us pray. Lord, bless these gifts that we give today, that they may be used to further the work of your kingdom. May we look at others as if through your eyes, less judging, more loving, and seeing them like us as not perfect or finished, but as work in progress that will be completed in due time by your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Will you please stand? I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory, when I'm home where my soul belongs? Was I loved when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song?
Friends, I charge you as we wrap up this neighboring series to live like that, to go out and to love God with all you have, with your heart and soul and strength and spirit, and to also love your neighbors. It's not easy, but it's so worth it. And as you go, know that you do not go alone, for God walks with you. God has got your back. And so as you go, may the love of God, the grace of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen. You shall go out with me and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field. The trees on the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be that forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field The trees of the field will clap their hands while you